Okay, so now what we're going to talk about is the layout of Pro Tools. Okay, so first we have two main windows that make up our Pro Tools layout. And that is the Edit window and the Mix window. Okay, and you can see these two popped up here. They could be in different arrangements and stuff like that. You could only have one that pops up. If that happens, you simply go to Window, and there's Mix and Edit. And the one that is in the forefront will be check marked. And if the other one is open and in the back, we'll have this little diamond on it. Now you'll notice that the command, command equals on a Mac or control equals on a PC, on a Windows based computer, is going to pull up the window that's in the back. Basically, what this does is it toggles back and forth between the two. So if I hit command equals, you'll see how it just goes back and forth between the two. And so if one of these is closed, I hit Command equals, and it will pop up that the other window and then go back and forth. And the reason why it works this way is because Pro Tools is really set up. They've worked really hard to pack as much stuff as they can in these two windows to make it so that you really don't need to go away from these two windows much at all. Okay, the There are a couple other windows and the most common one you'll find yourself using is the transport. Now this one might have already popped up before and with your session, okay? But it's a, a floating window that you'll notice will be in front of either either one of these mixer edit windows, okay? And it has actually all of its controls can be identically seen in the top of the edit window if you choose to do so. You can see this little arrow here will let you change which views you have. Okay, and so the transport window, you know, basically is about starting and stopping your session, moving things around, and as well as other things. Okay, and it can be turned on or off here in the Windows menu, and it's also Command One. Now this is on the numeric keypad, so if you're on a laptop, this might be a little bit more difficult. It's not the one that's right above the Q on your keyboard. Okay, and on a Windows based computer, it is Control 1. Okay, so we'll turn that off for right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're just going to jump ahead real quick and create a couple of tracks just so we can see what the tracks look like. Okay, as we look at the layout. So if we go to Track New, we're going to type a 4 in there, just do 4 mono audio tracks, and there we go. Okay, and now the tracks are identical in the edit window and the mix window. It's just two different views of the same thing. Okay, you see how we've got audio one, two, three, and four? And there they are in the edit window as well. Now in the edit window, you're gonna have your waveforms on your audio tracks, your regions, your audio regions, and then you'll also have in your MIDI tracks, you'll have your MIDI regions and MIDI notes and, and different um, lanes of automation and such. And then, of course, with other tracks like auxiliary tracks and master tracks, you'll have your automation, your playlists that you can view, volume and, and pan and, and things like that. Okay, so we'll go over all that stuff as we progress in here. But just to start, you can see how this is laid out. And you can see that if as we go to the mix window, it looks more like a mixer. Okay, the same tracks, but now we have our faders here, we don't have any, any spot for viewing the content on the track, but we have more control over processing what is going through the track, okay? And if we scroll up here, you can see we have inserts and sends and inputs and outputs, okay? As well as our, our faders on our track with pans and etc. okay? So as we go back and forth, you'll see that in the edit window, we don't really have any of those controls in the mix window, but we can adjust what we have in our session. So if we go here to our, this little drop down above the audio tracks here in the edit window, we can adjust and we can add that inserts A through E, for example. So if I go here and add a one band EQ, you see that? It's there, EQ1B. You'll notice that that is on this same track here. See how they're identical and the inserts are there. Okay, the same thing 
with the I.O., which is my favorite thing to have on here, you'll notice it, I can click on volume and you can see how both faders are moving identically in the edit window and the mix window. Okay, so you see how those just kind of work together. Okay, and let's go up to the, the top of the edit window here. A lot of great features up here. We're just going to kind of blow through these real quick. We're not going to go into great detail on anything specific, but get the general idea of things so you know what to set your settings as. So first are our edit modes. We'll talk more about those as we progress. As we're working with loops and stuff, we're going to want to be in grid mode or slip mode at times. Um, shuffle mode is kind of dangerous. That's why it's red there, and we'll find out later as we go along. Okay, We have our, our view options here, so we can zoom in and zoom out, or zoom controls. Okay, So you can see how that goes in and out. And if this little orange button is selected, now I can hit R and T on my keyboard, and it will do the same as R for that button and T for that button. Okay, You can also use command left and right bracket, left bracket for this button and right bracket for that button. Okay, And this is horizontally zooming on your session. You can also do some vertical zooming that we'll talk about later. Okay, Then we go to the tools. We have a zoom tool which works the same as what we just said. It um, basically clicking does that zooming in and if you hold option or alt on a Windows computer then it will do the opposite and it will zoom out okay then we go into our tools and and we could we could take forever going through all these tools individually but I just want to basically point out that the the few st really incredible strengths of Pro Tools are number one the two windows okay we talked about the edit window and the mix window and number two is the smart tool okay the smart tool is this combination tool that utilizes the trimmer tool the selector tool and the grabber tool okay and so as you, as we work with regions you'll see how this how this works we'll talk about it and basically you'll see that right now i have my selector tool but if i go to the lower half of the, my track i get this grabber tool it switches and once we get regions up here you'll see how it switches to the grabber to the to the to the trimmer tool okay and dynamically goes between those three now i see people that are really adept at, at pro tools and i see them going back and forth changing tools and i i just it's really sad to me because to me one of the greatest strengths of pro tools is the smart tool and honestly for me personally i hardly ever go up here because I always have the smart tool selected. I have key commands that will actually let me access some of these other tools like the scrubber and the pencil tool. I use the key commands for the zoomer tool so I never touch that and so I don't have to keep going back and forth up here to switch between those tools. Okay, It can be a little cumbersome figuring out how your your tool changes back and forth but once you get the hang of it it's it's like the back of your hand okay so those are our tools we won't talk about these other functions right now because we just want to get enough to get us started okay so if we go on next we have our our um, displays here for our, our meters okay our counters and you'll notice that as I change in my ruler view here between bars and beats and minutes and seconds that my counters follow that as well okay and we also have samples that we can choose from but you see that there's a benefit to having bars and beats be your main counter or minutes and seconds and my favorite is showing the sub counter and having the sub counter be minutes and seconds and the main counter bars and beats now we're going to be working with loop based audio and um, based on a tick, click track and stuff like that. So we're definitely going to want to see that bars and beats. Okay, but you can also change it over here and such. Change either one. And so just a visual representation of what you're doing. And then also your start and end time dynamically move as, as you adjust your selection. You can even click in there, type 12, for example, hit return. And now you have a perfect 
12 bar selection, okay? And then if we actually expanded our window, you'll see that we have our grid mode, okay? So that deals with the the value of the grids, okay? So if I made it one bar, you'll see how these get a lot. Uh, my selection is, see how it's, it's, it's a big area there for so if I'm selecting I can only select one bar at the smallest amount okay if I go to eighth note you can see how I can select different eighth note amounts okay eighth note grids okay so that's what that is your nudge works the same way we'll look at that later on okay now you have also MIDI controls and transport controls which are the same as what we see on that transport Okay, so they're all the same controls. It's kind of hard with the resolution that we have right now to be able to see those controls, but you've got all those same controls in the transport in the top of your edit window, as well as the MIDI controls here, which the MIDI controls are really important. We're going to be using in just a moment to change our tempo. So the default tempo is 120. If we click on the little conductor dude, as I call him, the conductor track enable, okay, then... Um, we can take this tempo right here and just change it to whatever we want. We can click and drag it up or down. We can click in there and type 87, for example, hit return, and now it's 87. Or we can we can click in there and tap the T key, and it will take and average the last four taps. Okay. Or we can click in there and tap a MIDI device that's connected. So I'm tapping on the keyboard here. And it does the same kind of thing. Okay, lots of ways to define your tempo. Okay, and then we'll see how that works when we have a click track in there as well. And as that will also adjust our loops, the tempo of our loops as well. Okay, so that's just some of the basic layout of the session. We've got all of those wonderful tools and, and functions on the top. And then finally, we've got these two sidebars in the edit window. This is our track show hide, our groups and our regions. So as we add audio regions, they're going to pile up here and our tracks, we can actually um, hide our tracks and not see, you know, if we don't want to necessarily see 100 tracks at the time, we're only dealing with 20, we can hide those other tracks and we can even keep them playing in the background. Okay, but that's how we manage that is here with our track show hide. Okay. And then our groups, we can group tracks together, which we'll talk about as we move along as well. Okay, So that's kind of the layout of Pro Tools.